Life would be so much better if we could predict the future. And as we've just seen, the unforeseen always does occur. If we could anticipate our competitors' moves, we could always win. If we could plan a sales campaign knowing the future, we'd be guaranteed to have success. And yet strategy has proved an elusive goal for strategists for centuries. Even Sun Tzu, writing in his treatise on war, written over 2,000 years ago, said that the successful strategist seeks battle only after victory has been won, whereas he who is destined to defeat first looks for battle and then seeks victory. Now, it would be great to take a military approach like that to strategy and apply it to our world, your world, business, operations, institutions, government. But that tends to overstate the outcome. What we really need for strategy to be effective is a dynamic approach to strategy, an approach that takes recognition of the world around us and how it's in a constant state of flux, an approach to strategy that actually measures in detail our current position and more importantly, that of our competitors, and it uses that insight to have actionable intelligence. Intelligence that over time can actually direct and generate predictive intelligence, an approach that can suggest the winning moves. Now, when you can do that, you can change the game. And yet, all too often in business, we look back, we use historical data, same in institutions. How often have you seen a strategy being written just once a year and then slavishly followed throughout the year and at best refreshed based on last quarter's financial results or at best maybe last month's sales figures? But we're moving forward and yet we're forced to look back and being held accountable um, on our historical results when actually we're moving forward. And the world around us constantly is changing, and constantly change has a manifest effect on the likelihood of a successful outcome for our strategy. So no wonder strategists have struggled over the centuries and even millennia, because a strategy by definition is a plan to win. So it can't be static. It actually has to reflect the changing world. So you may be thinking, great, so where do we get such intelligence? And this is where, in my view, if we embrace emerging technology that allows us to measure what we want to know from tiny sensors or chips that can measure those parameters that allow us to instrument, in effect, the physical world in which we live, and then take advantage of the pervasive communications networks that you know exists today in most cities around the world. So think of that, a network of sensors that instrument the physical world, continuously emitting information that allows us to gain real insight to how our world is changing from products, to transport, to infrastructure, and communicate that data in real time so we can garner intelligence and get predictive capabilities. Let's take a simple example so you can picture this. Imagine a branded fizzy drink in a can that has a tiny sensor embedded in that can. And so that sensor could be emitting information to me about where it is. Has it been sold yet? Has it been consumed yet? Where has it been consumed and at what time? Aggregate that over all of you and everybody in the country. And you get a dynamic map that's changing in real time of consumption of a branded product in a country. That's a marketeer's dream. They would take their right arm off to get hold of information like that. And yet, that's possible. What I'm talking about here isn't science fiction. In fact, in a sense, it's common sense, because the technologies are emerging today. But that doesn't make it common practice. Far from it. In fact, very few industries embrace this approach to real-time strategy and decision-making. And I think one of the best examples I'd like to cite um, is from the world of Formula One, where actually motorsport racing 
I'll try and explain to you has a lot more in common with your lives than you might actually realize. Motorsport racing is fiercely competitive, it's highly dynamic, massively unpredictable, and yet we're held account to the world's largest sports audience every fortnight. So you better get it right. And going into a race, you would always have a strategy to win because uh, we don't want to come anywhere else but first. So just as in business, we don't leave anything to chance. We measure everything we can. So on a single car, we'll have over 300 sensors measuring what we need to know to understand the condition of the machine being raced and the position relative to the competition. That's crucial. But we don't leave anything to chance. We measure that all the time. In a weekend, we'll process over a billion data points with a team that's distributed around the world. It's not just the driver. Behind every driver, there are hundreds of engineers, technicians, and strategists working to execute the plan, which by definition of a good strategy is a plan to win. But what's crucial here is not only, like a company, do we go into uh, the competition with a plan to win, and a, a clearly stated strategy that everybody's on board with. But we also recognize that the world will change. That typically, by the time we hit that first corner, something unforeseen may have occurred, like a crash, like a skid. Now, what should we do? Well, we don't leave anything to chance. We feed all the information back to the room that you see here in England, regardless of where the race is taking place. So think of that, sensors over the wireless network, then relayed all the way back to England in real time. And then here, we don't just slavishly follow one strategy, not even for two hours, not even for two seconds. We run thousands of strategies in parallel all the time. And what we try and do is anticipate something that might happen in the future, something unforeseen. And then we ask ourselves the question, what if the brakes start wearing out? faster than we thought? Or what if the tires begin to degrade? Or what if there's a crash? What's the next course of action? So when that event occurs, we're already prepared. The decision has been taken for us, and we can make a decision in a split second. And that does make the difference between winning and losing at this level in the sport. Well, just like in your world, weather is massively unpredictable. Now, weather is one of those unpredictable elements that has a radical effect on racing, and it drives the way the strategists have to work. A sudden downpour of rain can massively change the performance of the car, and a strategist has to take a split-second decision should he bring the car in to change tires that provide better grip in the rain, and will he be able to overcome the loss of distance, the loss of space relative to the competition? So it's quite a complex calculation. So if we had to do that analysis when the rain started, we would be sure to lose the race. So we've already done the analysis, anticipating that rain may occur and disrupt our plans. Now, I'm not trying to say that in Formula One we can predict the future. If we could, we would always win, and we don't. But Real-time strategy and decision-making definitely underpins those teams that have had a greater historical um, success period. So when we come to our worlds, business world, institutions, and government, you would say, if in racing we wouldn't dream of racing a car based on a dashboard that told us how well we were doing five minutes ago or even five seconds ago, and yet in business, so often, our approach is a static approach, approach based on last month's figures or last month's data. So I would say in our worlds, we're moving forward, so we shouldn't be looking back anything like as much as we do. We should embrace new technologies that can allow us to instrument our world. We should accept that we'll never be able to predict the future, nice though that may be. The best we can probably do is know the sort of shocks that will perturb our strategy, know the sort of things that might go wrong. We can expect the stock market crash. We can expect the country to default on its debt. 
you can expect the sudden outbreak of war. So why don't we anticipate that beforehand, plan for what we would do in such a scenario, and then those companies that can respond in a more concrete fashion, more boldly, robustly, and without needing to wait for the perfect set of data or information, they will compete and get ahead. Similarly, depending on what business we're in, if we can embrace emerging technologies to instrument our physical world, we get far better insight. Imagine if we could um, use tiny sensors and the communication uh, networks in the world of retail. I just think if we had a dynamic monitoring of our products all the way down the supply chain, from the point of production to the point of distribution, point of sale, and ultimately the point of consumption at home. If you had that, you could optimize inventory around the world. You could perfectly match supply and demand, eliminating waste. You could fine tune pricing to offset the effect of competitor pricing. This could be dynamically changed in real time. You'd save billions while delivering a better quality of service to the customer. And these sensors are so small, so cheap nowadays, and the communication networks are there, that there's an endless series of opportunities. If, in the case of racing, we said, you know, weather is unpredictable, well, what about if we tried to stock our shelves, actually choose the products that reflect what we anticipate the weather will be this weekend? And what about if we actually modify the stock based on the way those products are selling, and the way the weather is actually rolling out in real time throughout the weekend. This is possible, and in some pockets around the world, this is being tested out. Um, so I, I believe that if we take this dynamic approach to strategy, and we really do embrace the technologies that give us the information that we need, turn that information in real time to actionable intelligence, accumulate that intelligence, that's your best barrier to displacement as a company, build predictive intelligence on top of that, and then we can have companies that can truly, truly march ahead with a dynamic strategy, compete for a better future, and leave the competitors in the rearview mirror. Thank you.